it's been a while, um, well over a hundred days, so, uh, I guess we probably should start from the top, it's been, uh, a while since I last recorded anything, um, the main reason being that, um, right now, I'm, I have a full-time job, so, all of a sudden, my uh, free time and time to do this was kind of short, and unfortunately, because, you know, right now, while this is this is a lot of fun, and I, I loved doing this almost every single day, um, I know that my mic is pretty crap, and, um, you know, I don't have the... P- I don't have the best setup in the world or lighting or anything like that, but I really did enjoy doing a lot of that stuff, and so despite the fact that I have a full-time job, I'm going to try to bring back all of the, uh, well, not all of the stuff I was doing, but some of the stuff I was doing, um... I did find a way to stream my uh, PlayStation on my computer, so I should be able to to actually edit the videos that I do on there, which is pretty cool, to be honest, and uh, I'm probably going to upload some more WWE content. Um, I mean, we'll see how that goes, because with the ability to edit the videos, I can actually put people's songs in there and created characters can actually have songs that belong with the with who they are of course I have to worry about copyright infringement that's besides the point but I'm hoping to bring at least some some of the stuff back I might do some Madden 17 stuff I'm not really a hundred percent sure exactly what I'm going to bring back, because, you know, Madden and NBA didn't get almost any views. Um, I also have NHL 17. Finally, I finally got hockey, um, which was pretty fun for a short period of time before I realized that I couldn't control all uh, NHL teams in the league um, for a franchise mode. So that kind of went down quickly. But I did add a whole bunch of characters uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Ruby in there, so, with that, you know, I've got a, I, I thought it was pretty awesome, um, gotta add a few more anime characters into my video games to make it even more legit, but, um, all, that's pretty much everything that I've been doing for the last several months, since I last put this up at the end of August, Um, I've basically been working my butt off trying to, you know, make enough money, um, to stay here and to try and get back to school next August and, you know, all things considered. But every single day, that's pretty much how it's been, which is, you know, a little boring, to be honest. Um, so I just decided that I might as well try and uh, get back into the the whole YouTube thing, you know. If I if I release, ah, pardon me. If I release videos somewhat consistently, and um, you know, try and find a way to to actually get views, you know, perhaps I'll actually start um, getting people to turn my way and be like, yeah, this person. You know, they actually release some cool stuff. And the more people, the more likely they are to actually tell me what they want to see. So, you know, if I have more people saying, you know, I want I want to see this on your channel, then I can, I can open my uh, channel to a wider audience, which is kind of my idea. You know, I want to bring back more Pokemon Nuzlocking because that is really fun. I thoroughly enjoy uh, randomizer nuzlocks. They are really cool. Um, I kind of want to continue on. Um, I'm not really 100% sure about my Sword Art Online game, but uh, I mean, some people some people watch that on, on Twitch. Maybe some people watch it um, on my YouTube channel. Um, 
I just need like a small handful of people to tell me, you know, hey, I, I, I actually enjoyed watching you play Sword Art Online. You should probably bring that back. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of uh, what I want to hear out of you know the people that actually watch my channel. I know that all out of everything, the most consistently watched show is is this vlog. So um, I should probably get onto the vlog part of it, where I talk about myself. <laughs> Which you know, to be honest, I, I normally have a hard time doing, but uh, today I I figured it out because it has been a while since I even thought about how long I've been on a. Uh, on hormones and it's 202 days 202 days on HRT that is who a long time I know that my hair looks a little bit longer and that's about it <laughs> but you know hopefully hopefully we'll see more changes over the course of the next um, hundred and sixty three days that's that's the hope. I mean, we're we're over halfway to a year, and you know, usually people look pretty good in their first year or after their first year. So, I, I really hope that you know we get moving in the right direction. Um, I also started doing laser hair removal, so I got two two uh, appointments done. So. Hopefully, in another like three or f supposedly after the third, um, after the third uh, appointment, I'm supposed to get like almost all of the blue and growth gone. But obviously, I still need to go in to to make sure that it doesn't grow back. But uh, that that's been really uh, interesting. It <laughs> hurts hurts quite a bit, but you know. I, I, I'm able to, to power through that uh, if it if it helps make me appear how I truly am on the inside, you know what I'm saying? So, there's that. Um, you know, I, I because of work, it's been really hard for me to watch any football this, this year, which has been kind of disappointing. Um to be honest, because I really, I really wanted to be able to, uh, to, I, I'm pretty sure I said this in my last Shaman vlog before, you know, football season even really began back in August, I wanted to, to come out every single week on, like, Monday and, or Tuesday, I wanted every single Tuesday, the day before these shaman vlogs usually come out, which is Wednesday, which happens to be today, by the way. Um, but every single Tuesday, I wanted to come out and do a review on the football for that week. So, you know, I wanted to, first week of the college football season, talk about all the top teams, um, you know, what happened, and then all the NFL preseason stuff until the regular season started, and then really get into you know, that, into football, but obviously, uh, it's bowl, <laughs> it's bowl season already, um, tell you what, uh, time flies by, um, <laughs> which is kind of sad, because I have no idea how, uh, how many people even <laughs> acknowledge my channel's existence anymore, not that that's their fault, it's definitely up to me. Um, it's all on me for for not doing this, but uh, I mean, all things considered, I'm. Uh, I mean, I, I I guess I could just say that I'm a, I'm a little bored with how everything's going. Um, just the same same old same old every single day. So I decided that I might as well try and start this up again. So the plan is to finish this this vlog right here. Um, to, to do an episode of Monday Night Raw leading up to the Royal Rumble and use the current standings, uh, the current title holders for that road to the Royal Rumble um, and then just put my own spin on it. So 
the the hope is that that'll go over pretty well. Um, but I don't really know. I mean, a lot of people do their WWE 2K universes. Um, I also haven't like technically got the okay from WWE to use their or or 2K. I, I'm not really sure. I know that one of my videos got copyright claimed for from WWE about their content. Though technically, I guess 2K would own that. So I don't know how they copyright claimed it. I uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Oh, uh, I mean, it could be the raw intro. I don't really know. But now that I now that I have it, I'm probably gonna edit out the intro and edit all the loading screens and just show the actual content. But this time I'll have their music, which is what I'm more worried about. But if they just take out the music part, well, they might mute the entire section. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'll, I'll worry about it when the time comes. So, but that's, that's, that's pretty much how that's been going on. Um, as you can see, we got, we got posters starting being hung up around this, uh, this house here. Um, speaking of, of that poster, I mean, season three of Code Geass. Whew, I'm pretty pumped. Uh, I know, I know. There's a mixed reaction, and I can totally, I can totally understand why people are worried about season three. But I'm not, I'm not too worried. You know, worst case scenario, it sucks, and then everybody just kind of ignores that season three ever existed, and you're just like, "Yep, the show is awesome." <laughs> I mean, that that's honestly how I feel about sequels in general. Is Worst case scenario, it sucks, and then you just ignore it. It's pretty much how that goes. But, yeah, we got posters all over this place now. Um, most of them are mine, to be honest. Including that one. Um, of course, we have uh, one of my second favorite anime characters of all time. That is, that is Ibuki. She's tied for my second favorite anime character of all time with Yui from The World God Only Knows. Um, yeah. And then we have uh, we have my third, which is Junko in Oshima. She's my third favorite character of all time. And then my first is, of course, Golden Darkness. I know that a lot of people might be wondering about me after my explanation on that. However, I will tell you right now that the only reason to watch that show is because of how funny it is. I'm not going to sit here and say that I watch it for the extra stuff that is really unnecessarily thrown in there. But, I mean, the show is just really funny. I mean, you have Rune and Ren that are switching places at random, and then you have the whole... Lala's inventions are usually pretty funny. Um, you know, I mean, there, there is there is some moments where I shake my head and then I, 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 I go like this. I just... And that's it. Then, then we move on from that part of the show and we get back. And of course, when Golden Darkness is on the screen, it is usually a, a great time because Golden Darkness is phenomenal. She is absolutely terrific. In every facet, the entire the entire course of Two Love Rue. So there's that. But um, as for the future of this channel, um, my hope is to start bringing stuff back, and if you don't have to, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I mean, I I keep saying this. I'm gonna say this probably every single. Um, one of my vlogs, if there's something you want to see, if there is something you want to see from my channel, type it in the comment section. Depending upon what it is, I'll at least take it into consideration. We're not going to go too crazy here, but you know, you want to see NBA, you want to see uh, football, you want to see baseball, you want to see hockey, uh, what else do I got over there? You want to see more of that... Um, um, more of that fighting game that has railgun and, and stuff in it. Um, I can make that happen. I can make that happen. 
but um, I'm also I'm also uh, going to tell you right now that on the 10th of January, I have a I have a certain video game coming out. It it comes out on the 10th, but I already pre-ordered it. It'll be here on the 10th. My hope is that it'll be here early enough in the day to where I can start playing and filming it immediately. And then on the 10th, bring some content from Fate Extra Last Encore. And of course, I also, I haven't technically pre-ordered it yet, but that's only because I don't know the release date. But I will pre-order Danganronpa V3. Um, for the PlayStation 4 because it comes out on the PlayStation 4. And I probably will bring some content from that too. Which will be super cool because I am a huge fan of Danganronpa. If you couldn't tell my second and third favorite character. Um, you know, Ibuki from Danganronpa 2 and from Danganronpa 3 Despair um, Edition. And of course Junko Enoshima from practically every Danganronpa there is. Practically, even though even though the first one, you know, she had some issues, but she was in she wasn't uh, she was technically in Danganronpa two and technically in at least mentioned in Ultra Despair Girls and constantly brought up in Danganronpa three and was in Danganronpa three's Despair edition, so. Of course, Lady Lady Junko is my third favorite. Um, it's it's I don't know. She's just absolutely brilliant. I I have a lot of respect for what Junko was able to accomplish because while I personally, I mean, a lot of people know how fucked up Junko is, but to be honest. Junko has some, I mean, she's just absolutely terrific. She she can get pretty much whatever she wants done. She's so good at what she does. I don't know. It's, it's, it's very impressive, to say the least. But, um, to be honest, I think that's about it. I mean, I know it's been over a hundred days since I last, you know, aired anything about anything, really. But, uh, I can't think of anything else that I really want to discuss. I mean, just to be honest, I, I mean, I, I pretty much said everything that I need to. I mean, every day's been pretty much exactly the same, so it's like there hasn't been much development. I mean, I mean, I've been on HRT for two hundred and two days, and you know, I don't have much to show for it. I guess I could talk about Pokemon Sun and Moon real quick because I've beaten the games, both of them. I mean, the. the just to be clear, I haven't completed the Pokédex in either game. But that is because Pokémon from previous games are in the Pokédex. I have caught every single Generation 7 Pokémon, new and new versions of old Pokémon, in the game. Boom. Have them all in the PC at the same time. For me, for me personally, I don't... I don't just accept having them registered in the Pokedex. I don't accept just having the highest evolution in the Pokedex. For me, I have to have every single Pokemon in the PC at the same time. Which includes Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, Charmander, etc. They all have to be in the PC at the same time. So I've done that for all Gen 7 forms and, po and new Pokemon. All of it. You know, I have Young Goose, Gumshoes, all of that in the PC simultaneously. I really wish, though, uh, one of the things that I really want, um, it, would, it would really, oh, pardon me, 
it would really only happen if I got enough people to view the channel and actually like participate and actively go and help promote the channel but if I actually got people to view view this channel I want to be able to stream this little, this this little girl right here I want to be able to stream this little girl on YouTube because my second playthrough of Pokemon, well, my first playthrough of Pokemon Sun, my second playthrough of Gen 7, um, I nuzlocked it, and it was pretty intense. I mean, I only lost four Pokemon, all things considered, but it was pretty intense. It was pretty intense. I mean, I was able to absolutely dismantle the Lorantis the second time through, you know, the first time I started with Poplio because Poplio is just the best starter, not by far. The Desi Duai and Incineroar are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the starter Pokemon for Gen Seven are are some of they're it's so hard to choose, and this has only been the second time that. I've Loved every starter. The first time was Gen 4, because I loved Piplup, Ch Chimchar, and, and uh, Turtwig. It was so hard to choose one of those three. It's so hard to choose one of these three. Those are the only two generations that I've ever had a hard time choosing my starter. I loved Primarina so much that I was barely, barely able to pick it over Incineroar. And the only reason... The only reason I wanted to pick Incineroar over Primarina was because of his finishing move. Well, it is Z move, but it's finishing move, which is malicious, malicious moonsault, because he goes off the top rope and does a moonsault. So I called him Neville, because in WWE, Neville does the red arrow off the top rope. So... Whenever I got towards the end of the battle, I would always hit that Z move. Once I once I had that, it was over because I'd hit that as his finishing move to knock out everybody. So when 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 Kukui f threw out his last Pokemon, you know I I hit that hit that move so hard. Boom one. I, I always counted two. It was pretty. It's it's just. It's so good. The second time, the second playthrough was so fun just for malicious moonsault. That that is the only reason. But I also had some some pretty great uh, team members for my uh, for my uh, Nuzlocke as well. Then my third playthrough, I, re I I I transferred all of the Pokemon from Pokemon Sun that I could possibly catch into Pokemon Moon. Got through everything. Now Pokemon Moon has every single Pokemon in the game. Um, except for, of course, previous gen Pokemon. Um, that don't have new forms. And, um... I restarted it to do a Wonderlock. Because Wonderlocks... Are entertaining. But... My first Pokemon that I got was a level 1 Beldum. And then my second Pokemon was a Picky Peck. So I traded a Picky Peck for a Picky Peck, which was really annoying. But So I got a level 1 Beldum and a level 3 Picky Peck that I traded a level 3 Picky Peck for. And then my starter got traded for the Beldum, obviously. And, oh god, that was brutal. <laughs> like, oh man, I got a Pella Scrub, which was just a Wingle at the time. Um... And let me tell you what, almost every single Pokemon except for that Picky Peck was level 1 when I got it transferred to me. And so I I died because Beldum only knew Takedown. And so when Picky Peck got absolutely obliterated, um, <laughs> just obliterated by an Alolan Rattata, and then I got all the way up to the, I got to the trainer school on the teacher the last after you beat all the four trainers and you get to the teacher 
And she sent out the fucking Magnemite. Ugh. Boom, everyone went down. Everyone. Every single person went down. And then I died to the Magnemite. And so I lost it all. And then I started again. I did another Wonderlock. Because I'm determined to finish this Wonderlock. To get it done. And... It started off pretty rough because I got some pretty bad Pokemon. I wonder if this is Moon. Oh. But after all things set all things said and done, uh, I got to route two and let's see, what is that? One, two, three. So that was my fifth encounter. Because you got one in the city, you got one by Kukui's lab, you got your starter, and then you got your um, Route 1 encounter. So my fifth encounter, um, which I just took the Makuhita because it's a wonder lock, so nobody gives a shit. And I, I wonder traded the Makuhita and got a level... Um, uh, level 6? I think it was 6. 5, 6, somewhere around that. But I got a Gibble. And a new Dragon Rage. And so I, I practically win the whole thing already. Like, I don't have to worry about anyone dying until I have to grind everyone up to, to just match my Gibble. Because then I just Dragon Rage everything. And all of a sudden it becomes super easy. But that's a... About it. I mean, Pokemon Sun and Moon was uh, was probably the best put together Pokemon game of all time. Like by far, the expressions that they had, um, the 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 break off from the mold um, that Pokemon has put themselves in. Um, all things considered, I really think that Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon was the best Pokemon games ever created. And it, it, it's really hard to argue with that point. You know, they, they were able to, to start things that, uh, you know, you never would have thought was possible at the time. Um, but one thing I do want to say is that there were these random guys, Corliss and Grimsley from Gen 5. Like, they're from the Unova region. And they show up in the game for some reason. But I, I tell you what, when I first saw Corliss, I was like, maybe they're doing something like Gen 5. Maybe it's a hint. Maybe they're doing a, a Pokemon Sun and Moon 2? A sequel? Maybe, maybe your character from this game is like the champion? And then you have to... It's been like two years or something. You're an undefeated champion of the Alolan Pokemon League, and you have to do this again. Um, and the Pokemon are, are there the, over time. Like more people have visited Alola, so that maybe there's more Alolan forms, or maybe there's um, you know more possibility for Mega Evolution, or maybe there's just simply more Pokemon in general um, that you can catch. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've got yourself one hell of a game right there. You know, you have to beat your your character. Um, from the, that would be that would be super cool to be honest. You know, if 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 at the beginning of the game, it searches for like, I don't know, that I'd kind of be giving it away, but. At the same time, you know, if that's what you built up to, and and you get to see this the, this new world after Aether Foundation has been brought down, and Team Skull is just kind of uh, a weak version of what they used to be, you know, maybe there's a new force, a new threat that comes up. Um, you know, I have I have no idea what they could do with that. But perhaps that's what they mean by throwing some Gen 5 guys in there. Or perhaps they, they, they're, they're doing something else. Because Gen 5 was something that broke from the mold. That's why it's my favorite overall generation. Um, it, it was completely different than every other generation of Pokemon that there has ever been. And, ever, and possibly, possibly ever will be. But 
maybe maybe what they're talking about with Gen 5 is that they might skip Gen 4 and throw us all off and do Black and White 3, which is something, honestly, that's the one that I hope the most because Gen 5, again, was my favorite entire generation, and seeing a, a, a threequel would be absolutely awesome. I just, oh, man, that would, that would be the coolest thing because... Um, that's kind of what I hope, but but the fact that Gen Five is there makes it hard to say that you're you're getting you know anything for certain. You know, a lot of people are like, well, I mean, they've done Gen One, Gen Two, and Gen Three. Now here comes the Gen Four remakes. But because, but remember, Gen Five didn't have remakes; it got sequels. So you don't know for sure whether or not you're going to get remakes of Gen Four. They could be. They could be doing remakes of Gen 5, uh, or they could be a th uh, Black and White 3, or there could be uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon 2, or next year we could get Pokemon Eclipse, which I, I honestly don't know if that's going to be the case, because that wouldn't make any sense to me. Because Pokemon Sun and Moon, here here's the thing, you know, a lot of people are talking about this Pokemon Eclipse thing, which is a cool sounding name and all, but... How would they even make that possible? Is it constantly sunrise or sunset? Like, is it possible? Is it constantly an eclipse? Like, it doesn't make any sense because if you're just doing the same thing as Pokemon, uh, as Pokemon Sun and Moon, where either it's inverted or you're going along the same timeline, then there's really nothing that's really that different. Not to mention the fact that you know if Team if Team, uh, you know, Skull and, and and the Aether Foundation are still there and you're following the same timeline, there's really not much of a point. Not to mention, there's no third Pokemon. There's no third Pokemon. I mean, you know, we get we get Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, and, and Emerald, and... and Ruby and or, or in Emerald Ruby and Sapphire, and you get Giratina and Platinum along with Palkia and Dialga, and you get Curem, and you've got um, Zygarde, but there's no third Pokemon. It's just like Gen Two. There's no third Pokemon, and you, I I highly doubt there's going to be a Crystal because what's the trio? So, uh, to me, making a, a Crystal, Emerald, Platinum, Eclipse game, I don't think that's going to be a thing. I, I can't help but not think that's going to be a thing, because there is no third Pokemon. There's, there isn't a, a, a third counterpart to Lunella and Solgaleo. It's... I, it wouldn't make any sense. Like, what are you going to try and find? What are they going to? What? What do you? What is Nebby going to turn into this time? You know, it just, it just simply doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. So, to me, that's why I think that Eclipse is is just a figment of people's imaginations. I just cannot see it happening. Um, now I can see a Pokemon Sun and Moon 2, um, I don't know where they would go from here though, because pretty much everything's wrapped up, you know, the Aether Foundation has been liberated, they're back to being a normal, um, outstanding group of people, Team Skull's kind of dissolved into the abyss, you know, um, we got Lily going off to Kanto, I mean, th there's also that. I mean, what if we get, what if we get Gen One remakes? But not maybe, maybe not even remakes. What if we just go back to Kanto? What if they have like a new, a new uh, storyline for that? You know, red. Look at red and and blue in Alola. They they are significantly older than what they used to be like they they're in their late teens possibly even early to mid 20s you know how most pokemon fans 
that were, you know, that really originated in 1995 are now, you know, you know, we're talking about a huge shift. So perhaps we go back to Kanto for a new, new look at the region. Maybe, maybe some of the gym leaders have changed, kind of like how what we got in, um, in uh, Gen Two, where where some of the Kanto gym leaders had changed, um, the Elite Four was slightly different, that kind of thing. Um, of course, with Lance being the Pokemon League champion solely because of Red's disappearance, um, and then they added Koga to the to the Elite Four from his gym, and so his daughter took over, which was super cool. You know, perhaps we go back to Kanto and maybe there's been some more changes. Maybe there's a new Pokemon League. And maybe, maybe, this is th this would be ridiculous, but just throwing it out there, maybe Lily is Pokemon League champion. Silence? Okay. Well... <laughs> It was just it was just a possibility, but I think that you know returning to Kanto for a Gen Seven game would be pretty cool because we didn't get one since Gen Three. There's no, I mean we we did get to see uh, Gen Two's version of Kanto in Gen Four, but you know I I I don't know. It's probably a stretch, probably a stretch, but you know perhaps we'll see that. Perhaps we'll see. You know, a new version of Pearl and Diamond along that kind of predictable line. But I just like how it's so wide open. You know, there's so many possibilities on where they can go with this. You know, sequels to... Maybe Pokemon Sun and Moon 2 could actually be in Kanto. Maybe maybe, maybe they give you the ability to go to Kanto and Alola. But you start in Kanto. And then you beat the Pokemon League champion, which is Lily. And then Lily takes you back to Alola to show you, you know, the land that she grew up in. And then you fight the, the Alolan Pokemon League champion, which is your former self. Which they'll probably just stick a generic person in there. But they might have, like, all three of the starter Pokemon. They might be, like, the red of Alola. I don't know. I, I don't want to get your hopes up too much, but that that would be a pretty awesome game. Like I would probably say that was that would be this the greatest storyline that they had. I, and I just came up with it in about five minutes. I mean, not even. So I don't know. I I, I hope that they come out with something really cool, um, even if it's not next year. Even if we have to wait two years. I doubt we will, but you know we might hear something about it within the next you know three three, four months about a possible game coming out in, uh, you know, October, November of next year. Who knows? But that's really what I got to say about Pokemon Sun and Moon. It's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal game. It's a huge step in the right direction. It's something completely unique and that we've never actually seen before. Um, I really think that, all things considered, this is probably the best Pokemon game they've ever created. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about that, and I, I mean, I'm sorry for, if you're still even here, I'm sorry for, for going on and on about, uh, you know, Pokemon Sun and Moon, it's just, I had been waiting for this for a long time, and I was, I was not let down, this, this game was absolutely terrific, it was, I'm so, uh, it's, it makes me glad that I waited as long as I did. Um, I, I'm also like, there, there are a lot of people on YouTube that played Pokemon Sun and Moon, which kind of makes me feel a little left out because I, you know, I wasn't able to, to stream my 3DS to my computer or anything really. But, um, you know, I, I, I was really, I really thought this was one of the best games, you know, uh, and this was the best Pokemon game that they've created so far, and it, it does definitely gives me a lot of hope for the future. I did like seeing other people's reactions to the uh, to the series. Um, I also liked uh, some of the people. I, I have watched people Nuzlocke this uh, this game as well. Um, of course, um, you know I, I feel like it's. Uh, Uh, 
Okay. I feel like I have to sneeze. Okay. So I, I feel like it's a. Uh, I feel like it's a. Uh, I don't know. I I I I I enjoy watching other people play these kind of games because for me it's a it, it, it gets kind of boring when you when you just play it yourself and you only have your own opinions. So one of the things that I did not like though, as much as much as I uh, adore, you know, Pokemon for trying to get out there what what Sun and Moon's dishing. You should really should keep that shit a secret. I mean, let's let's be real here. It's not like people are just going to turn away from it. They're like, oh, look, Sun and Moon has a... Or Pokemon released a video about what they're going to release in Sun and Moon. And you're like, but why? Why do that? You know, well, at least, hey, oh, there's going to be Team Skull, and the Aether Foundation's going to try and stop them. But... Don't release all the Pokemon in the game. I mean, come on. No one's going to get away from those spoilers. And to me, they're spoilers because the game hasn't come out yet. So I, I, that's something that I really don't like. You know, um, you know when you, when you get to a point where uh, you're just basically telling people, okay, so this is the game. You should buy it. It's it's kind of like, yeah, I'll buy it, but it would be a lot more fun if we didn't know what to expect. You know, your Pokemon. Like, you either like Pokemon and are going to buy the game, or you don't like Pokemon and you're not going to buy the game. Of course, if you don't like Pokemon, there's, you probably need to go... You know, get yourself checked out. But if you if you like Pokemon, you're gonna buy the game. So why tell us all the Pokemon in the game? Like, why not leave that a surprise? It's not like I could get away from spoilers. Cause I mean, I go on Facebook and they're just like, "Look at this Pokemon! Oh my goodness!" I'm like, thanks, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like spoilers that much. Uh, I would have preferred to, to go into the game blind, but at the same time, because I can't avoid them, I did I did kind of look up, uh, I did kind of go, whenever Pokemon comes out with a new video, because especially with Pokemon Generations um, consistently coming out for a while now, you know, I've been able to, to look up and see everything that goes on. Um... And so I kind of got some things really spoiled for me, which was kind of sad. But anyway, don't want to keep you here much longer uh, since I've been ranting about Sun and Moon for like 20 minutes. Uh, sorry about that. But uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure if you like this video, click the thumbs up button down below. Leave a comment in the comment section, either thoughts about, you know, this video, anything that I've talked about in this video. Um or answers to any of my questions, which is mainly, you know, what do you want to see out of this channel, um, you know, in the future, all of that good stuff, make sure you, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below, go back and check out all of the episodes from the Shaman Vlogs, and anything else that you might be interested in on my channel, if there's nothing that interests you, then please let me know what I can do to get something to interest you, you know, what, what kind of stuff would interest you in continuing to come back to my channel, so, um, thank you all for watching this video, and hopefully next week we'll come out with another Shaman vlog, and I'll see you all then.